One thing Mike does is make you think. Yes, and that's not always a good thing. <laughs> it ruins every song I've ever written. Every time I try to sing it, I'm not that <laughs> Man created God. And he created a God that you better fear. And I've been saying for years that God is illogical. But religion... It's not logical at all. Yeah. Religion speaks two different languages. It speaks the language of love, unconditional, and hate. The God that man created was called Jehovah in the Old Testament. And Jehovah was a tyrant. If you don't think so, read the Old Testament and see what happens to you if you don't obey Jehovah. Yet, he did send Jesus so that Jesus could be sacrificed so that Jehovah could forgive and love you again. That's a story of religion. There's just no truth in it at all. I heard more truth out of Mike last night than probably what you can find in, in, the, in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. And you know the thing about listening to other people, now he mentioned last night uh, Joel Goldsmith. I, I, I lived on Joel Goldsmith's writings for probably over a year, and also Walter Lanyon. Mm -hmm. and received a tremendous amount of help. Their ministries were similar, but yet they were still different. But you have to realize, when man is speaking, especially about spiritual things, he's really telling you, trying to explain to you how he arrived where he is. Now the problem with that is, we are all on an individual path, and your path won't necessarily work for me. We keep trying to bring the kingdom of God, what we call the kingdom of God, we keep trying to bring it into this realm. It will never fit. If Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world, why do we think that if we get the right Christian in the White House, things will change? <laughs> well, I'll guarantee you they would change, but it would be for the worse. Yeah. Because you would be put right back under even probably worse laws than we have now. In religion, there's no room for differences. That's obvious by the at least 50,000 different denominations that we have. And the only way you can be one with those different denominations is you have to believe like they believe. And if you don't, there's not much hope for you. I think one of the first things we have to realize is that each of us is a spiritual being having a higher dimensional aspect to our being. And that is what will really bring you into oneness. And, and how do we really achieve oneness? Well, you already are, so you don't have to achieve it. But it's one thing knowing you're one, and it's another thing walking in oneness. Because if you're not walking in oneness, and you hear me say something that you don't agree with, will reveal to you if you really do know and walk in oneness. That doesn't mean you have to agree with everything Robert says, or I say, or Mike says. But deep within, 
we realize that there's only one life, there's only one nature, there's only one being, and we are all flowing in that being, whether you realize it or not. I do believe the, the biggest hindrance that we have is the religious dogma that we've been taught. I don't think anybody struggled any harder than I did for years to try to measure up to what I was taught. I spent literally days and hours, unending time in, in different translations of the Bible and different concordances and seeking for the right church and the right message. I literally wore myself out. I got myself into uh, a depressional state to where for days I couldn't even get out of bed. I mean, I did, but I had to struggle because I was so bombarded and laden down with doctrines that I couldn't live up to. And I'll never forget the day that I awoke and realized that there was nothing that I had to live up to, that I was everything that I ever needed to be. I didn't need obedience. I didn't need to, I didn't need to obey because I already was everything that I strived for years to be. Now, I've said for years you should never try to change yourself. But something happens to you when you have a deep spiritual experience and everything about you changes. So it's not that we seek for change, but if you're miserable, you can say all you want to. I don't have to change. But if you're miserable, knowing that you don't have to change isn't going to help you. But what's going to help you is when you realize the truth of your being. A lot of us are still experiencing negative things. It's a part of life. Carol's lived with me, what, Carol, for about 30, 30 years, 30, 33 years. <laughs> and she can tell you no matter what happens, whatever happens to me or whatever happens to our lives personally, she's never heard me complain about it. How could that be? Because I really know, I don't just believe this, I know this, that all things are of God. And I know, as Mike said last night, love is all there is. I haven't yet come to the conclusion that love causes all the negative things to happen to me, but I do know that whatever happens to me is for my good. And if I can know that, then how can you complain about something you know is for your good? You just can't. And when you experience negative things, don't feel bad about it. Just know that love is all there is. Reality is love in action. To me, that's reality, love in action. Well, does that mean we're all, like Mike said last night, we're all ushy-gushy? Not necessarily, because love is also at times very harsh. I think we all know that Jesus was the uh, uh, embodiment of love. Yet he called people snakes and vipers. 
So all of us probably have a little different concept about love. But we do know that love is not purposefully hurting anyone. There's been a lot of talk about Christ. And to me, Christ is the reality of every man. Well, what is Christ? Christ is love in action. And as Mike said last night, when you realize that love Christ is love in action. And when you realize that, from that point, nothing really matters. It really doesn't. Can you imagine the peace that is, was said last night, the peace that passes all understanding? Well, you can't understand it. I don't understand it when a doctor diagnoses me with cancer. I don't understand why I don't care. It doesn't make sense. Yet, that is the real peace. When you can come against any obstacle and not lose that peace and know that all things really work for your good. You see, the problem is we judge by appearances. How, how much has Mike talked about judging by appearances? That's the thing that keeps us locked in a mental prison, is we judge by appearances. And it's a prison that you'll never get out of until you stop looking at the outward appearance. I have said for years now, the only thing I have really centered on in my whole life is Jesus. I've, I've spent years in scripture and I, as I've said, I absolutely love the scripture but I have enough sense to realize that some of that stuff that's in there is just nonsense. Yeah. We have no idea how much scripture has been tampered with over the years. Yeah. Even some of the things that was told about Jesus, I believe, was fixed a little bit. But there's always been something about him and I always say, read the red. Because to me, I have gleaned more life experiences out of meditating on that man than anything I've ever done. And he said some mighty mysterious things like I can't do anything I of mine own self I can't do anything yet look what he did that hit home to me so drastically one time when, when that hit me that I of my own self can do nothing. And here for over 13 years, I tried to do everything without success. But when I really realized the depths of what he said, I of my own self can do nothing, and then look at what he did, I realized that there's no reason why any of us cannot be as he was. He was simply love in action. But although he said, I and mine own self can do nothing, he said, I am the way, I am the truth, 
and I am the life. How can you connect those two? I can't do anything, but I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. The key is in those first two words, I am. I, I really wish, and I've <laughs> had these desires for years, that some of the things that we experience if we could just open the eyes of the blind. When I began to realize this difference in Jesus could do nothing yet, I am the way. How could he say that? And still say, I can't do anything. He, he realized that, that I am the door. He said what? I am the door. The door is connecting with the I am consciousness that brings you into the revelation that love is all there is. Now you're either judging by appearances and you're saying, well what Mike's said last night, I could never be like that. You could say, like I did for years, I'll never stop doing that. I can't do that. I'd pray to God every day, God, please help me do that. But I'd never do it. I was continually saying, I can't do it. I would even confess to God, I'll never be a good Christian. I'll never be able to love my enemies until, I'll tell you, deep within, I heard these words, I am. That was the first revelation that Moses had when he asked God who he was, I am. Those two words, I can promise you, will deliver you from anything that you might find yourself in. The main thing we need to be delivered from is self-consciousness. You see, it's the self that says, I can't do this. Well, you're just agreeing with Jesus. Nothing wrong with that at all. We connect with that very well. I can't heal the sick. I can't raise the dead. Well, neither could Jesus. But when he connected and knew the truth of I am, I've been saying for years now, you will never know the truth until you become the truth. And your truth may not be somebody else's truth. You all don't have to, we don't have to have this very same experience. When, when, when the scriptures say, judge not by appearance, what it's really telling you, don't judge by the outward appearance. When you judge by the outward appearance, you will always be imprisoned by circumstances. Well, I can't do anything. Yet, I am the light of the world. See, I don't have a problem saying that. Because I know that I can't do anything, yet I also know I am the light of the world. Yeah. And anyone who follows the I am will not be in darkness, but will become the light unto the world. I believe the outward appearance is man's distorted creation. I, I don't want to say this because I know it. Your words and your thoughts 
will create your destiny. Yeah. It, to me, it's so simple. Because, like I said, I was like most people years ago, always confessing what was wrong. Always feeling condemned over not being able to be whatever it was I thought I should be. But I heard something deep within me that said, you are everything that you need to be. You see, if you realize that you are everything you're trying to be, everything you're trying to be will just fall away. And at that point, you don't instantly then become everything that you are. But what falls away is the struggle and the belief that you have to do anything to be approved by God. Nothing you have to do. Nothing you have to believe. The most important thing you can do is follow that within you. What is your heart telling you? And it can be a very difficult thing to distinguish between the heart or the head and the heart. So many things that, that I believed years ago didn't come from the heart, they came from the head. And I'll tell you how I learned the difference. One day as I was seeking for forgiveness and I was crying over my faults and, uh, you know, I, I couldn't stay out of adult bookstores and I couldn't do so many things, and I was crying, I'd say, Lord, you know I don't want to do that, but yet I do. And I know I'll do it again. And what I heard was this, you do not believe my word. Now he wasn't talking about the Bible. He said, you just don't believe my word. And you cannot come out of your bondage, your despair, as long as you do not know in your heart the truth. Well, see, I knew in my heart the truth. I really did. I knew that I, I had experienced what I called at that time the God of glory, filled my soul. When I first experienced that overwhelming presence, I cried for three days. And when I heard that, you don't believe my word, I already knew, I knew in my heart, I knew the truth. And I was trying to do it. That's why I was so miserable. As I was confessing my sins one day, I heard within me, stop it. The scriptures clearly reveal, even in the scriptures, that sin is no more. Never was. Once you begin to walk in the I am, you realize you have never sinned. And you are perfect without any change whatsoever. See, that's the reason Jesus was so successful is because he knew the truth. He knew that love is all there is. No, you don't have to change anything, but you can start speaking the truth. So when I heard that from the Lord, you don't believe my word, 
And I heard a lot more. If you really believe my word, if you really believed it, if you really believed in your heart, if you would act upon what you believe in your heart to be the truth, you wouldn't have to struggle anymore. So I put it to the test. The hardest thing in my life at that time was trying to overcome nicotine. And I knew I did know the truth in my heart at that time. And so every day I would go in my room at night and I would pray. Not in the old religious way, but I would just be thankful. And I'd say things like, Father, I'm so thankful to know the truth. I am so appreciative to know that I am not a smoker. And I would, every day, I would just talk like that. And I did that with all the negative things in my life. I just said, God, I know the truth. I know that I love you. I know that I'm a son of God. I know that you've given me a new heart. I know that you're causing me to walk in your statutes. And that's when, after a period of time, you've heard me say so many times, I woke up July 11th, 1982, and I was a new person. The struggles were all gone. The have-tos were all gone. And that's why now nothing can take away from me what I have. I often remember what I think it was Peter said to the beggar. He said, silver and gold have I none, but what I have I can give to you. Jesus said, although I can do nothing, I am the resurrection and the life. How would you like to say that? And really, really be in that reality of... I'll just give you a challenge and ask you to try it. But you, you have to believe these things in your heart. Because just speaking positively, I did that too for a while. Speaking positively and, you know, I'm healed and I'm blessed and I'm blessed. None of that is going to help you. I've been, I was in the Word of Faith circles. And so I met all those big guys. All of the, uh, you know, the... Kim Clement and, and uh, gosh, I can't even think of their names. Yeah. It's been so long ago. But anyway, Carol and I, we got to rub elbows with all those biggies. And I was prayed by all, every one of them. Now, many people get results that way. I'm glad I didn't, and I'm glad I didn't because I discovered something much more richer mm -hmm. than just walking around in good health. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would love to walk around in excellent and good health, and I will someday. But right now, I don't really care. I am so blessed, and I am so happy But I know that love is the source of all. So, if you just really consider, what, what do you guys really believe? What's in you? What do you really believe? Because I can promise you, if you believe in your heart, and then you confess with your mouth, 
you'll begin to experience the one who can't do anything can do all things. But you don't go around doing all things. You only do that which that within you desires you to do. So you're not under any burden to heal the sick or raise the dead or to, uh, like Kenneth Hagin, he used to try to teach people how to heal. And all the Word of Faith preachers pretty much did that. They would have they would have classes to teach you how to heal. And I'll never forget one of the things Kenneth Hagin said. He said, if you pray for enough people, eventually somebody's going to get healed. <laughs> well, hell yes, that's true. We had one of those faith healers come to our church one time, the Word of Faith Church, where, where I was an associate pastor. And, and he spoke for probably 45 minutes to an hour how Jesus heals everyone, every time, without fail. Well, that, that in itself, obviously, if you know the scriptures, you know that's not true. Yeah. But he spent a, a, at least an hour convincing or trying to convince everybody that Jesus heals everybody, every time. <clears throat> At the end of his message, he had a prayer line. And a lady come up to him and I think it was, I think she had, I don't remember exactly, she had a gorder or something wrong with her throat. And he talked to her a few minutes and he said, Sister, I'm going to pray for you right now. And if you have the pray, faith, God will heal you. And I spoke up. I was in the front row. I said, if she has the faith, she don't need you to heal her. See, that's what I mean about religion. We are so confused by what we've been taught and what we've read in books and what somebody else has said. Try it. I am the resurrection and the life. That might be hard for you to believe in your heart, but, but it's the truth. There's only one life. So I began to confess these things with no experience. I just, I just, there's something in you. You know the truth, but sometimes the confusion in your mind has got you so covered up and clouded and you can't do anything but judge by appearances. And that's why it's good to take some time to, and see religion will tell you, don't do introspection. You know why you're taught that? Because if you do, you might find out the truth. You might believe that I've created in you a new heart. You might believe that I've taken out the stony heart and I put in a heart of flesh. And I'm causing you to walk in my statutes. You might begin to believe some of that. I am the resurrection of the life. I had a hard time for a long time when I began to try to be positive and walk with a positive confession. But I didn't confess what I didn't believe. In other words, I didn't go around saying, I am healed, I am healed. I just, it's something in me, just, I just couldn't, I couldn't believe that. Why is that? Perhaps. Just perhaps I need to go through all the negative experiences to bring me to the place where I am today. I thank God for every religion. I, I thank, I'm thankful for every church I ever went to. I'm thankful for all the negative experiences I went through. I'm thankful that I couldn't believe God for all those years. I'm thankful for all the, all the, the, the hardship and the trials and the yeah. stuff that I went through to try to be good because all the life's experiences you have bring you to the point you are today. Yeah. Yeah. I am a consuming fire. 
I can't do anything, but I am a consuming fire. Within me burns the light and the fire of God's presence. And because I am a consuming fire, it burns out of my consciousness all things that would make me feel inadequate, inferior, Hebrew says, our God is a consuming fire. And your religion tells you, yeah, and that fire is going to burn you for eternity unless you obey God. But the truth about that fire is that it burns everything out of you that's not according to what you should be. It burns out the false image. It burns out the false beliefs. It burns out the God that everybody worships. There is no such God. Boy, have I lost people over that one. That God that religion created for you was a curse to humanity. There are millions of people today all over the world who are almost destroyed because of believing in the God of Christianity. I wouldn't let anybody call me a Christian for the last 20 years. I don't believe in that God. There is no such God. Neither is there a Buddhist God, a Hindu God. There's only love. That's all there is. And love will form and bring you into whatever it is you need to be brought into. I used to tell people years ago there was a afraid of hell's fire. I used to love to preach about hell. And I, I'd take them into the scriptures and I'd show them where uh, Jesus said, or John said, that Jesus was the true light that lights every man that comes into the world. There's no one without the light of God. Now, the light of God is also the fire of God. And I used to tell people, when we come together, you have a fire, you have a fire, you have a fire, you have a fire. Everyone in here has the flame of God burning inside them. And when we get together, what do we become? A lake of fire. And then you let the unrighteous and the sinner and whatever we think all that stuff is, you let people come in amongst us. And as the lake of fire, they will be purified without them doing anything. I have seen this time after time. I was in a group one time for about seven years that walked in this reality of coming together and realizing the truth. And we, we, we had drug, I've seen people strung out on drug, drugs walk in amongst us and sober up. One day we had an alcoholic, he was stumbling in. And, and the reason that happened is we'd have what we'd call a love feast every Saturday and we'd go out in the parks and the streets and we'd sing and we'd testify and we, you know, and we'd invite people back for a dinner at the church that night. And one night this guy came in, he was so staggering drunk and it wasn't very long. Nobody said anything to him. Nobody prayed for him and he began to sober up. And he got up that night and he said, he got bare feet, dirty feet. He got up and he said, I'll be a son of a bitch if I ever seen anything like this. <laughs> Nobody criticized him. Nobody told him he couldn't talk like that. Nobody would tell a prostitute she couldn't prostitute her body. I've been in a group that had a lot of these experiences. Mm -hmm. 
And I wouldn't want to go back and try to recreate that because you can't. And when we pastored in Oregon, there was such a presence, God, you couldn't believe it. People would just walk on our property and they'd begin to weep. They'd come into our meetings and they just were overwhelmed. They, you talk about, you've heard of people talk about the tangible presence. Well, then they tell you what, it was no mistake. You walked in among us and you walked in the very presence. A presence of love and appreciation, a presence of acceptance. And I know you've heard me say this, but I would tell the prostitute, uh, uh, no, no matter, I said, I don't care what you do. I don't care what kind of a lifestyle you have. If you will just come and sit in our presence, you will either change without effort or you will leave. I couldn't guarantee everybody, but I'd say, if you have a heart for God, I don't care what you're doing, you come and sit in our presence and you will change. And we've seen it happen. So I am a consuming fire. You know, somehow, someday, we will all walk in that awareness. One of the reasons I studied the red so much, what Jesus said, is when I read the words that he said to his disciples, he said, you are clean, not through what you've done, not by your actions, not by your obedience, but you're simply clean through the word that I have spoken to you. So the word not the Bible, but the word that you hear within your own being, the word will purify you. Mm -hmm. Or perhaps the word that comes from Robert. When Robert speaks words of spirit and life, they will enter into your being, and whether you believe them or you don't believe them, It'll bring change to your life. That's just. One of my favorite scriptures talks about us being the body of Christ. We are the body of love. The fullness of him who fills all in all. For in this body, in the collective body lives the full measure of him who makes everything complete and who fills everything everywhere with himself. Now I would change that to read it this way. You are love's body, the fullness of love who fills all in all. For in that body of love lives the full measure who makes everything complete and who fills everything, everywhere with love. You see, that, that's who you are. You are love in action. And when you know you are love in action, you will have what you say. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because the more the weak says, I'm weak, he'll never get out of that prison. The more that the poor confesses, But you see, you don't have to experience what you know to be the truth. 
And if you know to be the truth, then why not speak the truth? And speaking the truth, and it's not going to happen overnight. It didn't happen for me for a long time. Transformation will take place. Now again, don't misunderstand me. I, I assure you, please, don't try to change your life. It's not your life you need to change. Judging by the flesh, judging by the appearances, there's us and them. There's the Baptists and the Lutherans, the Catholics and the Pentecostals, the Buddhists and the Taoists and the... See, as long as you're in that mindset, you're in that prison of the mind that says, I know the truth. And if you're not where I am, Some people speak the truth of what they think is the truth and it, it creates a division. There is no separation. I think the clearest, at least one of the clearest definition of the oneness of all is in the parable of the vine and the branch. Jesus said, I am the vine, but you are the branches. How could there be any separation or difference of life in the vine and the branch? And, and you have, look at all humanity that way. We are all branches of the vine and we all have the life everything that love is we are already and we never have to try to make that happen I know we've heard this for years Words are powerful. Yet everything is established by a word. And I assure you, all of us, deep, deep within, we do know the truth. So why speak all the negative stuff? You cannot speak what you know to be the truth without that coming forth in your life. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs>